All right, everybody. Thank you for joining another episode of Training on the Tees. It's Tuesday, January 6, 2015. I hope you all had a happy new year. Today we're going to be talking about power pivot modeling, and we'll be covering some more advanced data modeling techniques to take your models to the next level. Just to give you a little bit about me, I'm TJ Brown. I'm a business intelligence consultant with Pragmatic Works, and I've been working here for a little over three years. I love it here. Uh, we, we're located in Jacksonville, Florida, and the weather's great. And I'm a big fan of struggling football teams like the Florida Gators and the ferocious Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so today we'll be covering three different design patterns for Power Pivot. We'll be covering parent-child hierarchies, which is when your dimension records have a parent attribute. We'll be covering role-playing dimensions, which is when a fact table uses a dimension multiple times in the same fact table. And when you have different references, each of those is a different role, which is why we call them role-playing dimensions. And we'll also cover many-to-many -many relationships. Okay, so our tools for the trade for today are going to be some DAX formula. Um, for our parent-child hierarchies, we're going to learn three new types of formula. Um, we're not going to get too in detail here, but they're going to be the formula path, path item, and path length. And path returns a delimited hierarchy from oldest to youngest. Path item turns a, a particular item in the hierarchy. And path links returns the number of items that that <clears throat> that are parent to the current item. So you can use that to find what level you are deep into the hierarchy. For our role playing dimensions, we'll learn a new DEX formula called use relationship. And the use relationship is the function that we'll use to define how to use an inactive relationship in a power pivot model. And for our many-to-many -many relationships, then we'll also use this formula for our role-playing dimensions. We'll use the calculate function. Now the calculate function is used to evaluate an expression and to apply a series of filters for it to add additional context to the calculation. And the more experience you get with power pivot, the more you'll realize how powerful the calculate function is, and it'll become your best friend. Okay, so let's get started with our demo. Now, if you open up a blank workbook, We'll be using the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse for our example. And go ahead and open up your Power Pivot window. I already brought in a date dimension just so I could hide some columns that we're not going to use today, and I created a calendar hierarchy. It, um, some <clears throat> An assumption I had to make in this webinar, just so we have time to fit everything in, is that you have some level of experience with Power Pivot. And if you need some introductory knowledge to Power Pivot, we have multiple great webinars on our website available for free. Um, just go into our free training section on pragmaticworks.com and search for Power Pivot and you'll find some good stuff there. So go ahead and create your date dimension and we're going to bring in some new tables to this data model. So to get new tables into our data model, we'll go up to the Get External Data section of our Power Pivot window and we'll go to From Database and From SQL Server. And the server I'm going to use is my local host, which is my personal computer. And I have the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse on my local host. So I'm going to give it just a second here. And we're going to use the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. That's AdventureWorks DW 2013. If you have a different version of it, like maybe 2012 or 2008, that should work fine. So I'm going to click Next. Oops, looks like my database changed. 
So I'll click Next. And we're going to select a couple new tables to import. So we use that top radio button and click Next. And we're going to bring in two new tables to our model. We're going to bring in the fact finance table. This is alphabetical order, so scroll down and try to find fact finance. And we can give these friendly names. So we can use spaces in our friendly names, and we're just going to call this table finance. And we're also going to bring in dem organization. So we'll scroll back up. We'll find dem organization, and we'll remove the dem portion of the table. Okay. I'll click on finish, and we'll import those tables into our data model. It shouldn't take too long. These tables aren't very big. We'll click close. And right now, we're currently looking at the design view of our data model. If you see a grid, up here on the top right hand corner of the Home tab in your Power Pivot screen, you'll see the View section. You can toggle between the data view, which is your grid view, and the diagram view. And we're looking at the diagram view right now. Okay, so we have a finance table here, and this is our fact table. And we're going to do what we normally do with our fact tables, and we're going to hide all of our foreign keys. So I just selected the bottom account key, hold shift, select the finance key, and that'll multi-select all of our foreign keys in that table. Right click, and we'll go to hide from client tools. This should be one of the first things you learn once you're dealing with your Power Pivot models. And I'll move the date dimension to the other side, and we're going to create our relationship between the date dimension and the finance table. To do that, we'll drag date key over to in the finance table to over to date key in our date table, and Power Pivot will create that relationship. Okay, so also I want us to hide these the other key columns in the organization table. We can multi-select by holding control, right click, and hide from client tools. Okay, now that we're ready to go, I want to toggle over to the grid view, also called the data view, 